Hello, and welcome to Please Me. Last week, Demi Wild, a sex writer, sex educator, and author of The Deviant Diaries and A Deviant's Guide to Sex, was on the show. And boy, did I learn a lot. Demi is also a podcaster and has a show called The Hookup Horror Stories with Demi Wild. He was an amazing guest, and I urge you to go check out episode number 10. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Eve is a licensed physical therapist who is on a mission to destigmatize conversations about sex. In her PT practice, Eve treats conditions related to sexual health. Please relax and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Please Me, the podcast that aims to destigmatize conversations about sex by turning the sheets into our classroom. Today, I have the honor to introduce Renee Moon. She is an author who has written a compilation of stories written by women from all over the world. Her book is called Her Guilty Confessions, and I cannot wait to hear all about it. So without further ado, I am going to bring on Renee. Hi, Renee. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. And yourself? Are you well? I am doing great. Thank you so much for joining me today, Renee. I cannot wait to hear all about your book. What made you interested in compiling a book of this nature and topic? Over the years, I've been chatting to girlfriends and women from all walks of life. And us girls like to discuss sex, fantasy, films, books stories, each other's experiences. And I just wanted to do something that was true to life, real life experiences, real life fantasies, real real women telling real stories, whether whether it's fantastical or whether it's uh, lived in the real world, they bring it to life. That That's their personal choice. But I wanted to do something that was real. Absolutely. I love this concept so much. And I am so excited to hear about some of the stories that you um, compiled and you found from different countries. And these, you know, some of these countries are countries where, you know, women are very repressed. I'm curious, can you give us a list of different countries, not every single one, obviously, you know, um, but just give us an idea of where some of these stories are coming from. Russia, India, Kuwait, the USA, um, Sweden, France, Spain. There's a whole plethora of countries that have taken, women from countries that have taken part. Um, that women were really, really forthcoming and very, very open. And it was a real pleasure. And I felt really privileged that they shared their fantasies with me. And they are so fun. So varied, I'm sure. Um, Tell me your favorite story, one that really got you hot and bothered. I liked the concept. There's one called Baby Bull. And I liked the concept of of that fantasy. It's... um, way out there way out there um it's a cuckold um story and it involves um a young dom lady and an older gent um she met him in later life um and it it just tells the story of her fantasy of wanting to get pregnant whilst partaking in um her indulgence of indulging herself in her fantasies and fetishes of dominatrix and the cuckold fantasy world. Um, She actually wanted to get pregnant by her bull. And to me, the the whole concept of it was so naughty but intriguing, so intriguing because you put yourself in the mind as you're reading you put yourself in the mindset of each woman and you actually feel like you're partaking it's it's really (laughs) really interesting I really really enjoyed it 
but to be honest there there are so many that i really really enjoyed um and they are so vast in subject matter and there's no one the same that that there are no limits there are no um cans and can'ts that's the whole thing about fantasy it's it's very open and you're free to do and think as you wish that that's the one thing that you can have for yourself that nobody can tell you right from wrong it's it's all it's all totally normal totally normal i absolutely agree and for me fantasies are something that pop into my head almost weekly <laughs> you know i have a very active imagination and you know something can trigger you know, me thinking about a fantasy and, you know, if it gets stuck in my mind for long enough, it can really develop into something, you know, pretty incredible. And, um, you know, what's amazing about fantasies is, is that it's it's your mind um, and it's your own personal turn on. It doesn't necessarily have to come to fruition. It can just be a fantasy and just be something that turns you on. And I just love that. Yes, that's the whole thing about it. It's it's personal choice. You you can keep it within. It's, it's your your own. You can share it with a partner or partners. You, you can live it out to to its fullest. You, there's no right or wrong. It's you're free to do as you wish to do and how you you feel. It's and it's something that you can go back to over and over again. We we all have our favorite go-tos i myself have my favorite go-tos that's human nature i agree you know when your mind is wandering and you're in the moment your mind goes to different places and i often think about certain things myself you know <laughs> so i think that that's what you're talking about your go-tos in terms of fantasizing and, and even you know when i um you know look at porn i always tend to gravitate towards the same type of subject matter because it's what turns me on visually. Mentally, different things turn me on. So fantasize, fantasizing is different for me than visually looking at porn. But it's similar, you're right, in that you know you have things that will turn you on, so you do go back to those things to kind of get you in that mind space while you're having sex or while you're masturbating even. Most definitely. So tell me about the most, and you already mentioned one that was a cuckold fantasy um, about a woman who wanted to get pregnant by the bull. And I'm assuming that the cuckold was her partner. Um, we didn't go into the details of that. But tell me about the most risque or shocking story um, and what country it came from. In your opinion, obviously, everyone has different opinions about what's shocking to them or not. But I'm just curious to know which one you were like, whoa, and what country did it come from? Well, I actually think that one was probably the most shocking, the baby bull one, only because of the subject matter. And it involved having a baby. Right. Um, which <laughs> you, you wouldn't normally expect to come into a, a fantasy, would you? So that was a bit of a, a surprise, but very intriguing. Um, there's one about flood. Um, a young woman fantasizes about being cut and blood and her partner drinking her blood. Um, there, there are paranormal fantasies. Um, menage trois, orgies, food sex. Um, oh, you name it. That there, there are so many variations so many now that is interesting definitely um was there a common theme that you picked on with a lot of the stories did a lot of people have similar fantasies you mentioned menage a trois i'm guessing that's probably a popular one i don't know um can you tell me if you had any themes that sort of kept coming back over and over again i did actually that there, there were two that were predominantly very very popular um cnc consent to no consent the rape fantasy rape fantasy okay um, okay 
And there was the the BBC. Big Black Walk Fantasy. That that is a huge one with the ladies. Um yeah, there there were so many of them. Them two seems to be really, really popular. All all different scenarios, obviously, but they were very, very popular and seem to be very, very common in their subject matter. Yes, absolutely. A rape fantasy. Okay, this is, it's so interesting because obviously nobody wants to get raped, right? I mean, it's such a horrible thing to happen, but it's interesting how many women do fantasize about that, you know? And um, when you're doing it with, you know, a partner that's consenting and you're consenting, you know, it becomes, a, you know, a, a way to role play. So it's very interesting that that is a common one. And um, the BBC one, you know, I personally can't stand that acronym. Um, I just find it to be very <laughs> racist. But I know that in certain circles and in certain communities, it's used a lot. Um, but uh, yes, that is also something that a lot of people fantasize about too. And I agree that it's pretty common. Um, so I note some of the stories came from countries where women have less freedoms than we do. Can you touch upon some of those stories and, and the countries that they came from? India were, was one of them. One, it, it was a wife swapping scenario which is totally taboo in their culture. Um, you, you stand a very good chance of getting in a lot of trouble um, in India with some of their belief systems. Um, there was um, Kuwait, um, again, same sort of scenario. Um, it seems to be um, swapping and sharing, swinging, I, I suppose is you always want what you shouldn't or can't have. And I, I'm gathering that that comes into it from, from what I received in from ladies. Um, it seemed to be that, well, that's human nature, isn't it? What you can't have, you want. So you seek it out. You shouldn't sometimes with some things, but some things by all means. Um, so th they seem to be the, the, the two, um, with the, the cultural triggers, um, was the, to be subject of partner swapping. It's, it's just a no, no in their culture, um, within the Indian and Middle Eastern culture, it, but it's a, a very common and big fantasy. Yes, absolutely. I would guess that that is definitely a no-no. But, you know, with the internet and how um, everything is connected now, you know, you can watch this podcast literally all over the world. So, um, and so many other, you know, things that people have access to and have learned about, um, about sexuality. And I think that that's amazing because we're spreading education too, you know, and um, to all places all around the world. And I think that that's incredible. And um, so, you know, it takes consent no matter where you are in the world. And, you know, who knows, maybe in India, there's, you know, a, a small subset of swingers that are, you know, or, you know, ethically non-monogamous population there that is, you know, taking this, you know, the concept and possibly having these types of, you know, situations. I mean, the Kama Sutra comes from India, you know, which is one of the most extensive uh, books on sexuality um, that has ever been created. And so uh, that does not surprise me one bit that it came from India because there's a lot of creativity around sexuality in that country. So <laughs> I most definitely would totally agree with you. Um, yeah, there are there are no limits to your mind, no matter where you are, and that's that's what I was finding. Um, women are united throughout the world in their fantasy worlds. There are no limits, and that's what's so good and positive about fantasy. It's it's a form of escapism. 
well, I, to, to me, it's a form of escapism, not to everybody, but to me, um, I see it as a form of escapism. And it's a, to me, it's a positive thing. You know, if, if you can get enjoyment, whether it's mental, physical, or psychological, then go for it. Enjoy yourself. Life's short. Life's for living. Yes, indeed. Life is for living. Life is too short. And you know what? If we wait until we're in our 70s to have our, you know, sexual liberation, we're going to have missed a lot of good years. So, you know, really trying to see how you can become more open minded is going to help you to enjoy your sex life more now, you know. And so I think that that's really amazing. And yes, it's a form of, of escapism, um, you know, and it can just be all right here, you know, but. You can also talk to your partner about possibly making some of these fantasies a reality if it's something that you're really interested in. I'm curious, did you write any stories for the book? I did. Ooh. I did write. I wrote a story for the book. I felt it was only fair if, if ladies were giving me their stories, I was to partake and put mine in too. Okay, so woman. <laughs> absolutely. Can you tell me about your fantasy? My fantasy is, is more voyeuristic. Okay. Um, I, I like being watched, so it's it's based on voyeurism and entertaining my partner. Okay. In a sexy dance or another way. <laughs> Him watching me, okay. Watching, okay. Enjoy myself and um, pleasure myself. Nice, I love that. And you know, voyeurism, voyeurism, and exhibitionism are two really common kinks. You know, and we yeah. talk about kinks a lot on the podcast and how you know in the USA. And I'm not sure what the statistics are for um, Great Britain, but. Uh, in the USA, 45% of people, um, you know, that have answered, uh, you know, um, a survey said that they consider themselves kinky. So that's a really almost half of the population. You know, it's very, very common and nobody talks about sex or it's very rare. So this is what this is all about is trying to bring these conversations to life because there's no stigma and no shame in sex. Yeah, I find it very strange that they're, it's so guarded because mm. it's, a, it's a fact of life and it's, it's a necessity of life. And what, why in some cultures and some classes of people is it so taboo? Because it's, it's something that has been going on since time began and why not enjoy it? Yes, no, absolutely. It's, and it's and big we, part of life. We, we, Exactly. And, and, you know, we know why, obviously, you know, patriarchy, et cetera. I mean, there's like a list of things, right, that we can go go down. Um, but absolutely, there's no reason why, you know, there is no reason why. Our mind is always creating and there is no end to our creativity. Do you plan on doing a series? Because I know that mind is my mind is always creating new fantasies. I can see that this book can easily be adapted to multiple books. I'm doing a, a male version next, his Guilty Pleasures, and then I'm going to move on to Our Guilty Pleasures, which was aimed at couples. Couples. Ooh. <laughs> yes. This is going to be a great, um, you know, trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> that um people will want to like own all three i think that that's so awesome so i'm excited to hear about the other ones too that's so exciting i always ask my guests this question and i hope it's not too personal for you but i'm gonna ask you a personal question now what is your favorite sex position i actually like missionary uh, i like the closeness the intimacy of it i like to see, smell, feel, touch a partner. Yes, yes. And you know what? Believe it or not, a lot of people think that missionary is boring, right? <laughs> but it is not boring. And you know what? That answer has come up over and over again amongst 
many different people, like, you know, men, LGBTQ community, um, straight. I mean, it's come up across the board. And I think it's because it really does offer a connection with the partner. You can see the other person's eyes. You can look into their eyes. You can, you know, kiss them at the same time. So it is a really uh, great position um, to connect with your partner. So I think that that is why that one is really, really popular. And you just said you like to smell, taste, and all of that, you know, and missionary is great for that. And I always like to say, it doesn't have to be boring. There are many variations of missionary. You know, um, we mentioned the Kama Sutra. That's a great place to look them up. But if you just plugged it into Google, you would find so many different options, you know, obviously legs down, but you can do legs up, legs over the arms, one arm, one leg up, one leg down, modified, you know, missionary where you're on your back, but your hips are kind of, you know, rotated a little bit. I mean, there's just so many different options with missionary. And I think it's a great position to build connection. I just love the intimacy, the, that, that intimacy of missionary, the different variations of missionary. To me, it's very, very intimate and personal between you and your partner. That's why it's my favorite. I often talk about... um stimulating externally when getting penetrated because women experience something called the orgasm gap where they don't get their needs met as often as men do, right? And that's often because women are not getting properly stimulated in order to start penetrative sex, number one. And number two, they're not getting external stimulation during penetrative sex in order to reach climax. And 95% of women need external clitoral stimulation in order to climax. So I am curious because I find missionary to be difficult in that respect. I'm curious if you do as well or um, if you use toys or your hand in that position. I just maybe this is too personal. I don't know, but I'm going to ask anyway. <laughs> No, I, I use my, my fingers and a toy. My, my favorite little toy is a little bullet. I've got a bullet and a pebble, um, both from Anne Summers. So I don't know if you have Anne Summers over there. Um, but they're my two favorite little toys because they're easily maneuvered and you can get them in most places. Um, so that's, that's my preference. But, but like you said, mi missionary, there are so many variations. You, you can shimmy about and change change the position of your hips. He can change the position slightly. Absolutely. And, you know, having these conversations and giggling through it as you're, you know, having these conversations, you know, while you're having sex is so key because if you want to get your needs met and, you know, this position is not quite working, but you can shimmy your hips a little bit to the right or to the left to get that spot, you know, that's when you really need to be open and honest with your partner, you know, and say, you know, slow down or a little to the left, a little to the right, right there and communicate with them because your partners most of the time, I'm going to say most of the time, want to please you. And so it's important to really communicate so that they can get you there, you know, because they want to get you there. You know, and it's not all about the orgasm, but if you already are resigned to the fact that you're not going to have one, guess what? You never will. So, you know, I think that it's important to, um, you know, to want to have one, even if you don't get there, you know, each time. But, you know, wanting to get to that place where you are fully enjoying and reaching climax, that's like the pinnacle of pleasure. So, um, so I... I'm always talking about the orgasm gap and closing that one person at a time. Yeah, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people about the orgasm gap. I'm I'm one of the lucky ones. I can orgasm over and over again. And I find when I orgasm, the more I orgasm, it gets better and better each time. I like have multi-orgasms. It's, it's not just one. Um, some women don't like that. Some some do, some don't. I'm, I consider myself quite lucky. And I do get a lot of people ask me, is it, you know, just general chit chat, talking about the book and 
I get people message me asking for advice. Um, I just tell them to experiment, experiment, try, try and relax and enjoy yourself and, and commit whether, whether you're on your own or with your partner, try and communicate with your partner. I mean, there's, there's nothing nicer than when you fulfill your partner, the way it makes you feel and, and you know, you've done that for them is, is a fantastic feeling and that takes both ways, doesn't it? So yeah, I'm, all for the orgasm gap and I'm closing it. Yes, absolutely. I agree. So I want to ask where my listeners can find you, Renee. Um, my book's available worldwide via Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, Waterstones. Um, there are numerous sites worldwide that is available online, but predominantly it's Amazon. Um, so if you, if you just put my name and the book title into Amazon on whichever platform you are, whichever country you, it will come up. And as far as I'm aware, it's translated as well. So there shouldn't be any barriers there either. Fantastic. Amazon.com. And would you, is it on audible then? Because Amazon and audible are linked. No, I didn't do audible because it would be so complicated doing it because it's it's so personal to each woman you would have to have so many different women and it just seemed a bit too complicated for me at present i might figure it out eventually um but at the moment i i haven't sussed that out and got that far um it's on kindle kindle unlimited um hardback paperback but not as far as audible yet who knows? Watch this space. <laughs> Absolutely. And do you have a website, Renee? I'm actually having a website designed at the moment as we speak. So that should be running shortly. Um, I can be reached by a SDC. My email is all over the internet. You you just put my name in and you should be able to find my email. Um, I'm on all the social platforms. So get me on any of them. Um, yeah, if you want to chat, just add me and we'll chat away. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Renee Moon, everybody. And I will definitely be looking out for that website and we can certainly, um, you know, promote it when it comes out too. So we'll keep in touch on social media for sure. As a licensed physical therapist treating sexual health conditions, I find that my clients are often ashamed or embarrassed about sexual health conversations. There is no shame in seeking help for your sexual health. Reach out to me if you need help with treatment for vaginal dryness, decreased sensitivity and aroused function, as well as pelvic floor conditions. I also do coaching, so don't be shy and stay high. Renee, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the show this week. Thank you so much for joining me all the way from the UK. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. We'll have to, again, do it do it when you have your next book coming out too. That's going to be an interesting one. Yes, his, his, guilt. Guilt. Yes, his, his Guilty Confessions. And this one is Her Guilty Confessions by Renee Moon. So go check it out. Until next time, everyone. for more information on products to increase blood flow and overall health, for her curated list of her favorite toys, and for swag that shows that you are a big fan. Please consider supporting the show.